The UK spouse visa is a type of visa that allows the spouse or a civil partner of a British citizen to join their partner in the UK. This visa is designed to keep families together. This is Dr. Khan and welcome to my channel UK Knowledge Guru where I provide 100% free guidance. In this video, I will provide you the latest and complete guidance on how to apply UK spouse visa. So without wasting time, let's start. So let's discuss what we mean by UK spouse visa. A UK spouse visa allows the applicant to join or remain with their partner in the UK if the sponsor is a British citizen. But ILR, which is also known as indefinite leave to remain or a settled status, has pre-settled status or settles under the EU settlement scheme. Is the UK with the refugee leave is in the UK with limited leave as a worker or business person under Appendix ECAA extension of stay. Now let's discuss how long the visa valid for and when you can apply for British passport. Out of country visa are valid for three years, which is also equivalent to 33 months. In-country visas are valid for 2.5 years, 30 months. It's lead to indefinite leave to remain and British citizenship. No restrictions or being able to work in the UK. Can I apply from outside the UK? If the applicant does not have any long-term UK visas, they will have to make an application from outside the UK. Now let's discuss can I apply from inside the UK. To apply from inside the UK, the applicant has to be in the UK on a visa that has been granted for longer than six months. For example, fiancé or civil partner visa, you can apply spouse visa not a visitor visa. What is the fees for the UK spouse visa? So it, how much it costs depend on who you are joining and how you are apply. So basically, if you apply from outside the UK, then the cost, if you are joining partner, parent or child is 1,846 pounds. But if you apply in the UK, then it's £1,048. Cost for each dependent added to your application. So if you want to add another dependent, then it will be £1,846 each person. And same £1,048 for each person as a dependent if you apply in the UK. Now let's discuss in detail what is the relationship requirement. So the requirement number one is the applicant must fall within the definition of a partner in the immigration rules. The applicant must be married or be in a civil partnership. Alternatively, the applicant must have lived with the sponsor in a relation similar to a marriage or civil partnership for at least two years before submitting the application. Intend to get married or enter into a civil partnership in the UK. The marriage or civil partnership must be valid under the law in force in the relevant country where the marriage or civil partnership took place. Now let's discuss the requirement number two. The sponsor's immigration status. The sponsor must be a British citizen, present or settled in the UK, in the UK with the refugee leave, person that has been granted pre-settled status, in the UK with leave as a worker, business person under Appendix ECCA. Requirement number three is you must be age 18 or over. Requirement number four, must have met in person. Requirement number five, intention to live together in the UK. Requirement number six, prohibited degrees of relationships. So, for example, 
the prohibited degrees for a woman, prohibited degrees for a man, the law does not allow for marriage between following relationship. Mother of a former wife until the death of both the former wife and the father of the former wife. So the prohibited degrees for women is son, father, brother, father's brother, sons, sons, brothers, sons, daughter, son. Same for the prohibited degrees for man, mother, daughter, do sisters, daughter, daughters, daughters. Now let's discuss the requirement number seven. Any previous relationships of the applicant or a sponsor must have broken down permanently. Previous legal recognized relationships are relevant. The breakdown of previous marriage or civil partnership must be evident. Now let's discuss the requirement number eight, which is genuine and subsetting relationship. This is decided more in light of your relationship as a whole rather than the document you submit. Whether you have cohabited, whether you have children, how long you have known each other, whether you share financial responsibilities, whether you have visited each other, home country and family. Now let's go in deep detail of English language requirement for the spouse visa. Majority English speaking nationalities are following Canada, New Zealand, United States of America, etc, etc. Secure English language test, which is also known as SED. So, for example, you need to provide IELTS, life skill provided by IELTS, IELTS for UK, BI provided by consortium B1, B2, C1, C2. So, this is the long list of English language requirement. So, you need to get any one of these before you submit for the sponsor for the spouse visa. English taught academic degrees or above which were awarded in the UK will need to be accompanied by the documentation from ECCTIS. If the overseas qualification was awarded in one of these countries, which is a long list, USA, New Zealand, Malta, Bahamas, Australia, etc., the following will be required ECCTIS documentation confirming that the qualification meets or exceed the recognized standard of bachelor's, master's or PhD in the UK. There is an exemption for the English language requirement. If you have circumstances, for example, you are age over 65 and over, undergrad degree, master's, PhD from a UK university. In that case, you do not need to submit English language requirement, but you just need to submit your document of your degree. Now, let's discuss the TB requirement for the spouse visa. Only relevant for out of country spouse, married partner, civil partner, unmarried partner, fiance, proposed civil partnership applications. Sponsor will never be required to take the TB test. So the person who is staying in the UK is the sponsor and the person who is applying from outside the UK is the applicant. So the sponsor don't need to do the TB test. The TB requirement also applies to dependent children who are applying. The TB test will have to be taken at a home office approved clinic. So you can check gov.uk website for the latest update on countries list included or excluded for the TB test. Yes, let's keep getting updates. So it's always recommended that before you apply, do check this list. The TB test certificates looks like this. How negative TB certificate looks like? It says no pulmonary evidence of active TB. So you need to make sure that it says and got the take on it. Who don't need TB certificate? A TB test will not be required even if the applicant is resident in one of the listed countries. 
The applicant is a diplomat related to the UK. The applicant has lived for at least six months in a country where TB screening is not required by law. And they have been away from that country for no more than six months. Now let's highlight the requirements for the accommodation. The adequate accommodation requirement will require you to show rather than the academic accommodation in the UK without recourse to public funds for the applicant and the family unit. The accommodation that you rely on to satisfy this requirement must be accommodation which the family own or which they occupy exclusively. The number of rooms available as sleeping accommodation is relevant. So for example, you are joining your family, someone you're getting married and you don't know how many people. So you need to make sure you have the correct number of people staying in that accommodation. So you can provide to the home office. So for example, for the rooms allocation, so if you have one room, then two person can stay in that. If you have two rooms, then three person in that property, three rooms, five person, four rooms, 7.5 and five rooms, 10 person. Any number exceed that will be counted as overcrowded. The accommodation cannot contravene public health regulation. The accommodation cannot be prospective. The accommodation has to be provided properly by the sponsor that way they stay the proper address and everything related to it. Now let's highlight and discuss the financial requirement for the spouse visa. Financial requirement is the most common reason for refusal for spouse visa. Let's split this in two sections. So the first section we will discuss the level of income you need to satisfy the financial requirement. The second section, we will discuss how you can calculate your income in accordance with the immigration rules. So, for example, does the sponsor receive one of these? So, if the sponsor receive any one of these, carer allowance, disability living allowance, attendance allowance, personal independent payment, etc., etc., if they do, the adequate maintenance test applies. If they do not, the starting point is that you will need to show your gross annual income 18,600, which is the most common way which people apply for the visa. This 18,600 figure will change depending on whether dependent children are also applying. So if you applying your application with children, then this figure changes. Whether cash savings are being included in the financial requirement, we will discuss cash saving detail. Dependent children that are also applying will increase the minimum income threshold of 18,600. If you have children, who are British citizens, have settled status, are not applying, this will not affect the 18,600 figure. So, for example, you have two kids. One of your kids already got the British citizenship, other one don't. So, you only need to apply a threshold on one child who don't have the British citizenship. If you have zero children, then 18,600 is the threshold. But if you have one children and you're applying for the spouse visa, then the figure increases from 18,600 to 22,400. If you got four children, in that case, your income must be 29,600. What are the financial requirements for the spouse visa when cash savings available? So, for example, if you have cash savings, can satisfy the minimum income threshold alone or reduce the minimum income threshold if you combine it with another source of income or be completely ignored. 
So for example, if you have cash saving of 62,500, then 18,600, no children applying. But if you don't have any income, or for example, you applying with one child, so your threshold change from 22,400, but if you don't have 22,400, instead of that, you got 72,000, then you don't need to provide income of 22,400. So for 18,600, the threshold get irrelevant if you have saving of 62,500 income saving in your bank. Can employment income of the applicant taken into account for financial requirement? Employment income of the applicant, the person applying can be taken into account if they are in the UK. They are age 18 and over. They are working legally. What are the financial requirements when you get the employment income? You must identify whether the employer is a specified limited company or not. If the company is a specified limited company, the requirement will change. The calculation of income will change. You will be required to provide additional document relating to the company. Now let's discuss the specified limited company. Because the specified limited company is not the same as limited company. Specified limited company is where the limited company is registered in the UK and the person is an employee or a director and the applicant sponsor or family member of the applicant or sponsor hold shares in the limited company and any remaining shares not including the applicant sponsor or family members of the applicant or sponsor must be held either directly or indirectly by fewer than five other persons. What are the financial requirements for non-specified employment income in the UK? Is included under either category A or category B. We will discuss both the categories. If the employee will have been employed for six months by the current employer, can apply under category A or category B. If the employee will not have been employed for six months by the current employer, then apply under category B. Financial requirements for non-specified employment income in the category A. You should first identify whether the employment is salaried or non-salaried. Salaried employment normally paid fixed basic amount per year. Non-salaried employment normally paid by the hour or a day. So this is how your salaried income payslip looks like. You will have the gross amount and if you have any bonus, it will be mentioned on it. You will also see the net pay on the right side, which will also be taxable. There are two different ways you can follow to calculate the income. Method 1. We will discuss this for category A, salaried. Method 1 is multiply the lowest total gross pay as seen in the pay scene, covering the 6 months before submitting the application by 12, by 52, if weekly pay slips are received. There are two different ways you can calculate the income. Method 2 is step 1. Multiply the lowest basic gross pay as seen in the pay slips covering the 6 months before submitting the application by 12. If res payment received monthly, if bi-weekly, then 52. Step 2. Total the overtime payment to cover total travel time, commission, basic pay, bonuses, etc, etc. 
on the pay slip which covers the six months before submitting the online application. Divide this figure by six and then multiply it by 12. Add this figure with the figure reached in the step one. Now let's discuss the non-salaried for category A. Non-salaried pay slips is basically accountable as per the hourly rate or the daily rate. The formula for this is step one, the gross income received as showing in your pay slip, which covers the six months before you submit the application. You can include the standard basic pay over time, payment to cover travel time, commission-based pay, bonuses, location-based allowances. Divide this figure by six, multiply this figure by 12. Now let's discuss non-specified employment income in the UK for category B. Category B is for the employees who will have been employed for fewer than six months when the online application is submitted. Being employed for six months or longer, but do not satisfy the financial requirement under category A. Please note the following two things. If the employees satisfy the financial requirement under category A, then ignore category B. The requirements and calculations are different if you are relying on the employment income of a sponsor who is based overseas when the online application is submitted. Now let's highlight the discussion on the other non-employment income category C. The following source of income are all categorized as non-employment income which is included under category C. Dividends, property rental income, interest from saving, maintenance payment from a former partner, UK maternity allowance, UK paternity allowance, widowed parent allowance, ongoing royalty payments, the general rule is that you can include the gross amount received in the 12 months before submitting the online application. How to use cash saving as a financial requirement for the spouse visa? So for example, lowest amount of your cash saving held at one point in the six months prior to the submitting your application. So, for example, you have loads of transaction, but you have to pick up the lowest amount of transaction in the last six months, the lowest balance. Amount that can be included toward the financial income. So, the financial requirement, for example, if you have 16,000, then that means you have zero you can add. But if you have 20,000 pound in your bank for the last six months, then you can Count sixteen hundred pound towards the financial requirement. So eighteen thousand six hundred minus sixteen hundred. If you have sixty two thousand five hundred in your bank, then the requirement of eighteen thousand six hundred will be ignored. Cash savings of the applicant and sponsor can be included. A formula will be followed to calculate an equivalent gross annual income figure. Now let's discuss the what source of income that cannot be included for the spouse visa. Benefits, unless the sponsor receives one of the permitted benefits. Permitted benefits are different from the normal benefits. So, for example, permitted benefits are disability living allowance, carer allowance, severe disability allowance, industrial injuries disability payment, attendance allowance, personal independent payment, armed force independence payments, guaranteed income payment under armed forces, compensation scheme, constant attendance allowance, mobility supplement or war disability, police injury pension. These are the ones which will be permitted benefits if you apply for the sponsor spouse visa. 
loans and credit facilities this cannot be included or counted towards the financial requirement or financial income towards the spouse visa benefits you can include them third party sponsorship exceptions are a family or a friend can give say, cash savings so for example someone give you the 62500 as a cash saving and you have them in your bank for over 6 months and you can apply for spouse visa what are the suitability requirements for the uk spouse visa the application will be refused if the applicant is subject to a deportation order the applicant conduct character association or other reason in such the home office caseworker thinks that their presence in the uk is not conductive to the public good the if the applicant without a reasonable excuse has failed to comply with the requirement to attend an interview provide information or physical data undergo a medical examination or medical report application will be refused if the application the applicant has provided false information representation or documents or failed to disclose material facts in relation to the applicant the applicant has failed to pay nhs charges amounting at least 500 or if they failed to pay in litigation cost awarded to the home office so this is the long list which got all the clause on it if needed you can send me an email and i can send that to you now let's discuss the what is the process to apply UK spouse visa. You apply online on www.gov.uk website. This is the only website where you can apply UK spouse visa online. Now let's discuss what happens after you apply for the spouse visa. You have to wait for the decision. The standard processing time from outside the country is currently 24 weeks the standard processing time for in-country applications are currently six to eight weeks the processing time normally starts when the applicant attends their appointment which is also known as biometric appointment when a decision is made partners will normally receive an email if you have any questions regarding this, feel free to contact me and I'll get back to you.